Chapter 10. Pen Pen fixed the strap on the one-shoulder dress he was wearing with a pin and dropped his hands to inspect his work. Twirling around, he noticed the long green dress floated much better with the minor adjustments he'd made today. The length was a bit short for him, coming to just above the ankles, but it'd be perfect for Jen. He'd agreed to make a dress for the girl, who was the daughter of a regular client of Riley's, to wear on her engagement party. She'd bought one of Penn's designs before and fallen completely in love with it. Penn suspected she'd love this one too, and that he'd also be commissioned to make her a wedding dress in the next few months. He didn't mind at all, Jen was a sweetheart, and a little bit of extra cash never hurt anyone. A knock on the door startled him. It was 10 p.m. Who would pay him an unexpected visit at that time? Getting out of the dress fast was not an option with all those pins in it, so Penn optioned for a long, fluffy dressing gown, hoping that it would cover enough of the dress that whoever was at the door wouldn't notice. Approaching the door quietly, Penn looked through the peephole. It was Adam. What was he doing here? After last night's fiasco, Penn had avoided him at the theater today, and thankfully they hadn't crossed paths. He just couldn't stomach looking Adam in the eyes and seeing the confusion there again. Or worse, the comparison. He'd known that was going to happen. It was natural, but it still hurt like hell. Pen, it's me, Adam, he said from the other side of the door as Pen stood there, unable to make a decision about what he should do. Please open the door. I know you're in there. I can see the light underneath the door. Sighing, Pen unlocked the door and opened it, clutching at his robe tightly. Hi, Adam said, smiling weakly. Hi yourself, Pen replied, but didn't step back to invite Adam in. I'm sorry I'm barging in like this. I should have called, but wanted to do this in person. Do what? Apologize for last night. Adam stared at Pen, who managed to hold his gaze, even though he wanted to look anywhere but at Adam. I, I'm not sorry I kissed you. I wanted to do that for a long time, Adam said, and leaned against the doorframe shortening the distance between them. His stare was as intense as it had been last night, irresistible. Unlike last night, however, Penn had no intention of falling under its spell. What are you sorry for, then? For comparing you with Charlie in my head, Adam said without missing a beat. I know you felt that, but please know that I didn't do it consciously. It was just a thought that popped into my head. I never meant to offend you. Penn nodded. He wasn't offended, not really. He liked Adam a lot, and wished that Charlie had never gotten to him first. And yeah, being compared to his twin brother in the sack was disturbing and unpleasant, but he believed Adam when he said he didn't do it on purpose. He got it. He'd been compared to Charlie ever since the day they were born. It was nothing new. In this case it hurt, because it was Adam. Selfishly, Penn wanted him all to himself. Are we ever going to move past this? Pen asked. Yeah, I think we will. Will you ever be able to look at me and not see Charlie? Adam raked his fingers through his hair and huffed loudly. I'd like to think that I will. Pen didn't reply. He wasn't so sure himself, but he knew that he'd give Adam a chance to prove that. What are you wearing? Adam whispered, frowning with furrowed brows as he stared at the hem of Pen's dress peeking from under his robe. It's a dress I'm making, Penn replied. For yourself? No, it's for a client. Confusion was evident on Adam's face as he raised his eyes to look at Penn. He'd gone a shade whiter than usual. Are you okay? Adam just stared at him, unblinking for a few long moments, before saying abruptly, I have to go. He turned around faster than Penn could react and fled. Adam! Penn called after him but he was gone. Penn stepped back into his flat and closed the door. What was that all about? Adam didn't strike him as a guy who was prejudiced against any kind of personal style. He'd seen Penn in makeup and wearing nail polish and didn't seem to mind, so why freak out over a stupid dress that wasn't even Penn's? Thank God he hadn't seen Penn's silk thong or he'd have probably fainted at his doorstep.